What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now today I've got for you three crazy relationship stories, starting with one in which a streamer gets caught cheating by his girlfriend. Although it's a pretty sad story at first, the fallout is magnificent. Let's get into it. First of all, make sure you are subscribed to my channel if you aren't already. Drop a like on this one. Here we go. I know I'm the jerk here. I found out my streamer boyfriend was cheating with internet girls and I took his whole setup away. This happened last week and I'm super petty and still angry, so sorry for the rant. I am a 25 year old woman and my boyfriend, well ex, who is 28, got into an accident last year. He's still trying to get a job, but it hurts him to stand for long periods of time. He currently gets unemployment, but otherwise I pay for everything. We have a lease together and I pay for most of it. During this time, I was thrilled that he was bringing in $100 to $200 a month streaming on Twitch because looking for remote work has been terrible. He's pretty popular in his game, has his own Discord, stuff like that. He told me up front that he doesn't talk about me on Twitch or Discord because girls make up a good amount of his audience. I've seen some of the comments on Twitch, pretty usual simpy stuff which he warned me about. I get it. I used to stream on and off too. I noticed him spending more and more time streaming, but there was no increase in money. He stopped coming to bed with me too. I stayed up late one night, pretending to sleep. At about 2 a.m., it got quiet, but I heard him talking. I heard him say, check your Snapchat, and yeah, I have to be quiet because my roommate is asleep. Roommate? I went to the living room and pulled his headset out of the jack. It was a woman's voice. He powered his computer off and started saying, what the frick, I told you it's how I make money, blah, blah, blah. I told him to open Discord on his phone and show me his messages. He refused. Maintaining the illusion of being single for the sake of work, I understand. But what he's actually doing, a little graphic, sorry, in my eyes is cheating. I grabbed his phone and locked myself in the bathroom. He didn't change his password, so I got into his Snap and Discord. All girls, nudes and videos saved on snapchat of them doing stuff together there were discord messages saying he can't voice chat because his roommate is so loud and annoying conveniently these were hours i'm home from work all these girls seem to all think he's in a relationship with them i didn't get to see too much else because he was banging on the door now here is where i know i'm the jerk but i don't feel bad i grabbed a few things and left i went back in two days with my previous ex and two best friends I'm super petty and he's always been insecure about my ex. We were no contact because of it, but I didn't hesitate to tell him everything. I also rented a small U-Haul. Not gonna lie, if you're gonna humiliate me behind my back, I'll humiliate you to your face. I get it, it made him feel unsafe having a guy he's insecure about standing there keeping me safe, but I still don't regret it. I Venmoed him the electric Jew and wrote it on the message. I grabbed all of my stuff, including the ring light and mic he uses to stream. His successful streaming career can help him pay for new ones. The router's mine too. The desk is mine. His computer went on the floor. The bed's mine. He can have the couch though. The air fryer's mine. I pretty much took everything I outright paid for or bought. I told the landlord I won't be renewing if he chooses to renew the lease and I paid final rent. Luckily, the lease is up in two months. I really hope he rots. I cooked. I cleaned. I supported his streaming career. I was so naive. I knew people could be like this, but I never expected it. I haven't gamed since then. I'm stick to my stomach. My switch is laying in the bottom of my suitcase. I haven't logged in to feed my pals in Pal World. I hope this hasn't ruined gaming for me forever. He hasn't even bothered to reach out, probably playing the victim. Okay, so there we go. That is the post, but OP has actually left a couple of comments down below. First of all, she says, wow, thank you for all the comments. Obviously, they're extremely positive, as you guys can probably imagine. She says, I guess I was tripped up that if I was a guy doing this to a cheating girl, it would definitely come off abusive in some way. So I figured I'm being a jerk, but I don't care. But in reality, I think we can all agree. There's no way that OP is the jerk here at all. This is just good karma. Now, here's a further edit from OP. This is my last petty action. In the game he plays, there are competitive 50v50 wars. Each account is locked, I believe, for 48 hours after each war to prevent the same 100 people being in every war. To counter it, the players all share Steam passwords with no 2FA so they can loophole the system. Well, he didn't change his password. 
I dropped all his items on the ground, handed his gold to random people passing by, and spammed some gross stuff on global chat because this company is notorious for perma banning and saying, won't respond to you again if you try to pester them. Bye bye, 10,000 plus hours. And then one final edit. You guys are insane. This post got circulated in some discourse from the game. I still won't confirm identity, by the way. It's his choice to own up or not. He ended up refunding my Venmo with a message asking to talk, so I will do that tomorrow. I may or may not update, but either way, thanks for all the support, everyone. It felt so good to get it off my chest. And as of today, at the time of recording, we haven't had a future update. Let me just check. When was this originally posted? Yeah, just 19 hours ago at the time of recording. I want to give you guys the freshest stories on the internet. So um, yeah, there probably isn't time for an update. But if you want me to, I will look out. And if there is another one, I can give that to you guys. Just drop me a comment down below. But yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? That OP thought she was the jerk here. When she's the one being cheated on and all she's doing is saying, no, I'm done with this relationship and I'm taking back the stuff that I bought that is mine. Doesn't matter if you're lending it to your boyfriend to, to stream. And by the way, is he really justifying chatting to other girls and not saying that he has a girlfriend because he's making one to $200 a month? I mean really no disrespect it's, a, it's an okay amount of money but you cannot even get close to living on that amount of money let's just all be honest here so yeah saying that oh i need to maintain this facade that i'm single because i'm making so much money from these simping girls online absolute bull just clearly an excuse to cheat all right now for our second story of this episode this one involves another cheater now this was originally posted on october the 16th 2023 on the subreddit r surviving infidelity with the title my wife just told me she's been seeing someone for the past six months been married eight years five and six year old kids i've been madly in love the whole time as she's an amazing person and mother literally keeps the family together and is just spectacular truly she was showing me something on her phone and i saw a text come in saying i love you more and I asked who it was. She explained it was a co-worker that she's been helping out, and I thought nothing more of it. That day, we had a lot of family over to celebrate our daughter's birthday, and it was a wonderful time. Some stayed overnight, so the next day, after a wonderful weekend getting company out and putting the kids down, my wife said she needs to tell me something. Well, that I love you more was not from her co-worker. Well, at least not the one she explained it was, but I'm not sure because she's not sharing any details regarding the other person. She told me that six months ago when I was in a dark place and have since come out of it, no drugs except weed and booze, which we both partake in, she found love in someone else. Love that I wasn't providing in our relationship. If I have feelings for someone else, I'm not sure that I should be married. It's not fair to you or me. I never planned for this to happen, but now that it's a reality, we need to deal with it. She explained that she wasn't looking for someone else. It just happened. A friendship that bloomed into more she's also told me that they have not been intimate and explained that it's not a sexual relationship she says that life is too short and she wants to be happy she's proud of all the changes i've made and i've always been a good dad but i've grown into a great daddy and my kids and i have never been closer however she wants to be a hundred percent happy and the changes i've made haven't gotten her there so she's seeking something else she says this person may not be the 100 answer However, she worries that I'm at the best spot I can be in and it's not enough. Although she's not giving me specifics. We've had a beautiful, loving relationship. We know that we're good together and we have our stuff in line. We'd be the last couple that folks would think this is happening to. So I'm devastated. Absolutely, totally ripped apart and I don't know what to do. We own a house together that we're making payments on. I carry no debt besides said home and she's in the same position. We had a perfect life together and I'm suddenly being blindsided by this six month relationship where she has feelings for the guy and thinks it's best that we split. I have no idea how to move forward. I've told her she needs to let her family know what's going on so that I can tell mine. It's her cat to let out of the bag. I'm just so sad for our kids. When we were dating and in marriage, cheating was the one thing that would break us. We both come from broken families. It was something I never wanted for our kids. I just feel so hollow and broken. She is or was my everything. And I'm so thankful for the 10 years we've been together. But I think the writing is on the wall and I'm helpless. It's all up to her. I'm broken into a million pieces. 
All right, extremely sad start to this one, but let's get straight into the update. This comes five months later on March the 7th, 2024. So pretty recently at the time of recording. She was caught by me catching a text at my daughter's birthday party saying, I love you more. When I asked again what that was about, she said it was a co-worker that she's been helping. Now, because all the family and friends were there, I didn't push it. But again, later the next day, she came clean saying that she's been in a relationship for six months. She refused to tell me who it was with or what they've done. I was devastated back then, absolutely destroyed. And five months later, I still am. So we spent some time apart and she continued her relationship with him. I did some digging in the meantime and looking at the phone records, it was our son's baseball coach. I called her out on it and she still continued the relationship. I saw a lawyer. He told me to not leave the house or the kids and either try to work it out or said it's time to leave and see a therapist. My therapist says that she is a narcissist and that I should protect myself, protect my kids and run. Come December, she said she had cut it off with him and wanted to try with me again. I gave her all the effort in the world, but I don't feel like her soul's been in it. She's not overcompensating or has even truly apologized for what she's done. I've also gotten access to her photos. I am the admin on the family Google account and she doesn't know that I've seen all I have. She framed a picture of him and had it, or maybe still does, at her desk. I found naked selfies she sent him that I haven't even received. I found a picture of his naked butt in our beach condo, which I thought was a neutral space as we were sharing it during our time apart. I slept on those same sheets. I know that she was at a fancy restaurant with someone else. She screenshots all these deep love quotes that I know aren't about me. There's just so much that lives rent free in my head. She has a white bracelet with one black bead that she now wears every day. I've called her out on it. She lied once saying it was from her mum, and up to last week said, well, my best friend has the matching one. Well, actually her affair partner wears an all black one with a white bead. I know what that represents. Again, she doesn't know that I've seen all these things. So now to the current day. I can't place it or find anything that suggests that she's still with him, but I know she used Snapchat often and is secretive with her phone. Whenever I bring up the affair, this blows up because I said I'd try not to bring it up and get over it, but I simply can't. I'm not rubbing it in, but it does come up when we argue, which is almost every week. We do really well for a bit, up to and including intimacy, but then something happens and we go back to rubbish. She cancelled our babysitter for trivia this past Tuesday. And for this Friday, where I got tickets for us to see a show, she doesn't want to go because I can't get over her affair. Her parents, mum and stepfather, both cheated on their spouses for each other and support my wife. And they both call and text me saying that it's unfair that I bring up her affair. Oh my gosh, how toxic is that? The pictures of him live rent free in my head almost constantly. I can't get past what she's done no matter how hard I try. I don't know what to do as she's trying to make me the bad guy. And I'm like, I've been here the whole time. I didn't fall in love with someone else. I just don't understand and I'm an emotional train wreck. Okay, and then three days later, we got this final update. Well, long story short, I literally just caught her at the family condo with the affair guy. And I have photos and videos of his truck, his belongings in the home, and her coming out of the master where he stayed behind a closed door. I also went into our shared car that she drove and it was left unlocked in the parking garage with an open high noon on the cup holder and her wallet and belongings still in it. She came home and tried to talk. It was a calm conversation, but she kept saying it was my fault. And if I communicated with her last night, I grey rocked her, maybe she wouldn't have been with him. So I communicated that I will be home later this afternoon slash evening So she's unexpectedly watching the kids today. Sorry, I have to just stop for a second. The gaslighting here is absolutely insane. If you talked to me last night, I wouldn't have gone and just cheated on you again. That is mental. Anyway, OP says he wanted to hang out with them and she took them away from me yesterday to go and do activities. And then I would do separate activities today. However, I'm not emotionally able to give the kids the best of me right now. And I definitely don't want to be around her. Now that's fair enough. I asked if she could sleep in one of the kids' rooms. And she got upset and stated that our bed is her bed and she'll sleep where she wants. I said, obviously. I've been for a six mile walk already and I've been calling and leaving voicemails at all the lawyers around. I know I can't abandon the home, but I can't be around them after what I just saw this morning. Now, thanks to all of you who responded earlier this week, suggesting Grey Rock and a 180 for me. 
I implemented them and I guess it drove her to this. Also, I just looked it up myself because I wasn't sure. The grey rock method involves becoming unresponsive to abusive or manipulative behavior so that the perpetrator will lose interest. I see. Opie continues, I'm officially divorcing her and there's no going back. Thank you so much to the r slash surviving infidelity crew. Oh, actually, OP has left a little bit more here saying legal counsel told me to no contact her. So that is what I'm doing. She texted me last night all about how she hasn't asked for a second chance, even though I've given them and she loves me. And she now is willing to do therapy and share her locations and access to her phone. And she can see herself rocking on the porch with me at 80 yada yada. When I got home last night, she was in the master. So I slept upstairs. This morning, no communication. She wouldn't even look at me. Yesterday, when I caught them with the video, I saw his hat and noticed it was a local landscaper's. So I called to see if he worked there. He does. Okay, thanks. That was it. This mother effer just called me saying, if I want to talk to him, here's his number. Don't call my boss. I said, I've got nothing to say to you. He replied saying he had nothing to say to me and hung up. Okay, he sounds just as bad as your wife. Also, her mum reached out saying how I must be devastated and she's so sorry and to call her when I have a chance. Okay, that is a weird 180. I'm going to continue my no contact with everyone and let my lawyer, once I secure one, do all the talking. This is so dang hard. Well, there we go. That is the end of that one. And to be honest, that kind of just got more and more sad as that went along. What a horrible woman your wife or ex-wife hopefully soon is. I just don't really understand people that, that... get caught doing this like how do people have the brain where you get caught doing something like this i mean you could say yeah first of all do it and doing it in the first place is awful fine we all know that but then once you're caught by your partner doing this and you're like you you clearly just ruined their life and your family's lives how do they just have no shame at all and if anything sort of like double down and just say well no actually i would have got back with you but you're like you weren't making me happy and that's why i cheated on you and also yeah, you didn't really ask for a second chance. You were just there. Like, do you even want it? Also, you didn't talk to me last night. So that's why I went and had sex with another random man. I just don't understand how people get to that like conclusion. It's weird. Maybe if you are someone that would cheat in the first place like this for this length of time, then you would also be the sort of person to double down and say, like, you know, gaslight your, your husband and do all the stuff that your wife did. I guess that kind of makes sense. But wow. Comment down below if you're a cheater. How do you do it, man? All right, now moving on to our third and final story of this episode. I found out why my boyfriend doesn't want to have sex with me. This was originally posted just one week ago at the time of recording. I am a 22-year-old woman and I started dating my boyfriend, who was 25, a year ago. I was a pretty lean person and was very active when I met him. After being together for a while, I decided to take extra precautions and use birth control. Due to stress and the birth control, I gained a significant amount of weight. My boyfriend has been very supportive and we were having a lot of sex. After having a horrible reaction, I decided to take a break from the birth control. That is when I noticed my boyfriend stopped taking the initiative and would only ask for oral. I was already feeling trashy because of how much weight I gained and just him not wanting to have sex hurt me so badly. I decided to have a conversation and see if I could change something. At first, he just said the condoms were just so uncomfortable. My love language has always been physical touch, so I obliged and tried birth control again. Due to having school and work, working out has been extremely hard, so I kept gaining weight and sex was still almost non-existent. But he kept telling me it's because he is stressed and just has a lot going on, so I was patient and supportive. Yesterday, we decided to play a little game, the blunt free trial. He would have to be 100% honest with me and I would try my best to not take it personally. I asked him, what is the thing he really dislikes about me? At first, he didn't want to say it and I pushed him to tell me, which is so stupid of me. He then looked at my tummy and said the reason why we haven't had sex often anymore is because of my weight. He assured me he still loved me and wants to be with me, but that's his preference. It broke me because that same day, just a couple of hours ago, we had sex. I just feel horrible and disgusting and I don't know what to do. I love him and I saw myself spending my life with him, but I can't stop thinking about what he said. What should I do? I don't know if I should try to work this out. Our lease ends in May, so I have some time to rethink my relationship with him. 
Any advice would help. Now, OP adds, many have asked about how much I have gained. I gained 20 pounds and I think most of it distributed to my butt and boobs. Some still went to my back and tummy. 20 pounds, is that it? It's not even that much. My goodness. I have some tummy rolls when I sit and some back rolls. This weight journey has been so new to me because I always used to be very underweight. Then COVID happened and I was able to gain some weight. I started working out and I was at the perfect weight and was pretty confident. This year I graduate from college and I've been experimenting a lot with birth control. So my weight and mental health has been impacted. Stress, even when I have been little, has always affected my weight. I'm slowly getting the help I need, but note I'm a college student and recently I've been getting more money to take care of myself. I take accountability that I probably could have a better discipline and not let it get out of hand. Okay, now I actually have a lot of comments on this. This is probably going to be like, not really a rant, but this, this is going to be extensive because my thoughts on this are not brief, is all I'll say. First of all, the main point here is that you've, it sounds like, have gained some weight as a result of trying to please your boyfriend, right? The birth controls obviously had a big effect on your weight. And if he is now not attracted to you as much because you're on birth control or have been experimenting with birth controls to please him, then surely he can't just say, oh, you know what? You're just too fat. Surely you're more supportive and just say like, I'm sorry. I know it's like kind of my fault. You were trying to please me, etc. Let's Let's deal with this. Oh, I'll wear a condom if I have to. Shock, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, not that I know. I'm a little verge. <laughs> Why would I? That's not funny. Imagine if you kept that in the fit. It's Virgil van Dyke. I'm sorry, Jack. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the actual weight gains yourself. You might have noticed there that I said only 20 pounds. Now, look, 20 pounds is a decent chunk. However, I have gained that in the last year, right? Look, you know what? We'll put some pictures up on screen. I'll get some pictures right now. I'll be in the middle here. This is my current weight. This over here is when I was doing the marathon last year and was pretty skinny. I was probably a little bit too skinny. I was like 72, 73 kg roughly then. And you can see the difference in my, obviously you can't see my body, but you can see the difference in my face shape. It's not crazy, but there's a bit. And then let's go over here. This is probably when I was at my heaviest. I don't know what I would have been, maybe 86, 87, maybe roughly here. This was a bit too chubby, let's be honest. And now I'm like, I think I'd have been decent weight. I'm pretty happy with my weight. I don't really care that much. But there's a big fluctuation there in the time I've been doing YouTube. And even from like, you know, one year ago to now, I've gained like, what, 10 kg roughly. I think I'm like 82, maybe a little bit less at the moment. So, you know, changing your weight that much, does it make you look that different to to the extent that someone would therefore not be attracted to you? I mean, I don't, do I look that different to this person here or even this person here? No. I think. And also, if you're watching or listening to this, sorry, on a, on a podcast platform, come over to YouTube so you can see what I'm what I'm talking about. I'll put the link down in the description to the video. Like, is that enough to say, oh, actually, no, I'm not attracted to you anymore? 20 pounds? Surely not. If it was 200 pounds, yeah, fair enough. I hold my hands up. I'd probably be unattracted as well. But given that there's a solid reason for it, which your boyfriend has started, and the fact that it's not even that much weight anyway, and then on top of that, the fact that you've been dealing with stress, you were underweight before, you were, you then got to a good weight and, you know, you, you've had stress related weight issues in the past and it's just not something that you want to really think about at all. Yeah, I just don't really know what he's doing. Anyway, with that being said, those are my thoughts. Let's see what the internet is saying. Somebody said, you wanted honesty and he gave it to you after you pried. I don't blame him for his preferences, just as I wouldn't blame you for leaving him. Not really sure what you thought the outcome of a game where you force your partner to tell you something they dislike about you was going to be, but at least you got your answer. Would you prefer he lied to you? Best of luck moving forward. Godspeed, internet stranger. I think that's a very, very harsh comment personally. Opie replied, I honestly thought the worst thing he was going to say is me snoring or something silly like that. I didn't expect this harsh conversation because it was just a game and he's the one who first initiated it. But yes, I probably shouldn't have asked that if I wasn't ready. Well, fine, but also you wanted to know what the problem was. This has been ongoing for a while. I don't think it's the sort of thing where you could just live with it for the rest of your life, not knowing what the issue was and why your boyfriend didn't want to be intimate with you. So I think now that you know that, it is net a positive thing. Someone else said, I just want to throw out some info. Some women, me included, absolutely need birth control. 
I tried to get off it after 20 years. I am a 35 year old woman. And after six months of the worst menstrual cycles, me in tears from pain, I went back on it. And within three months, I felt so much better. I have endo and PCOS and the pain from both is crippling and birth control helps 100%. I can't be off of it now. And now I'm concerned the Republicans are coming for my birth control. Condoms do not protect 100%. Birth control doesn't impact health negatively. A small percentage, though, may not want to take it. OP replied, I was an accidental baby because the condom broke. Okay, first of all, why do you know that? Second of all, fair enough. That is one of the main reasons why I'm on it. It has tremendously helped my period. It used to be so painful, irregular, with heavy flow. Now I can comfortably do daily stuff without feeling super bad. Fair enough. That makes sense. Now, here is the top comment. Somebody said, take a step back and think about this. You are putting your health at risk so you can have non-existent sex and long-term body issues. Stop this business. Take care of yourself. Get off birth control. Get your hormones regulated. He can wear a condom. That's it. That's all. You get back to your healthy habits and get your body back. Don't put your health at risk like this. There we go. Finally, a proper comment which I can get behind. And then someone else said, throughout your life, your physical appearance will change. Here we go, exactly. It might be weight, you might lose your hair, you might lose a limb or your breasts. You likely hope to have a long life with a partner who will stick with you through those things. If he was no longer attracted to you due to the side effects of a medication, then his attraction is skin deep. Do with that information what you will. Could not have said it better myself. Exactly, it's not even just about weight. Anything could happen. Any deterioration of your physical attractiveness could happen. And by the way, will obviously with age. If your attraction is skin deep, it's never going to last. And perhaps OP is finding that out right now. Who knows? But a day later, we got this update. Hello, everyone. I was not expecting my last post to blow up. I love my boyfriend. And while many suggested to break up, I thought the best thing before considering breaking up is actually having a conversation. I sat him down and I told him my concerns with his comment, how uncomfortable and damaging it is and how this all started because I started taking birth control. He was very understanding and apologized. He said it was a poor choice of words and that he loves me and will stand by my side no matter what size I am. He helped me create a mutual plan where we both would work out together at home and both get back in shape. After everyone's advice, I scheduled an appointment with my gynecologist to either find a better non-hormonal birth control or get off birth control and instead stick with condoms. He assured me that condoms are more than fine and that we probably should have stuck with them. Thank you so much for everyone's support and kindness. And if anyone is experiencing similar issues, I hope you find the support that I found on Reddit. Okay, a decent ending there. I, I respect this. Now, I've got to say, I'm a little bit doubtful long term, but at least your boyfriend is saying and doing the right things in the short term. I just feel like, you know, the sort of person that would that would actually do the things he did, act the way he did, say the things he did in the first place. You can't just like ignore that going forward. And I think there would be personally trust issues there if you ever did gain weight or didn't lose the weight. And you don't want to be in a sort of kind of stage of your life where you're trying to lose weight for somebody else. I just don't think that's ever healthy. So as long as you're doing it for you, I mean, that's fine. The stuff with the condom and the and you being on birth control makes complete sense, obviously. And I, I like that he admitted that he probably should have stuck with that in the first place. But yeah, overall, I don't know. I, I feel like, see how it goes. But yeah, I'd be a little bit concerned, although that probably is the pessimist in me. I do think it's good though that you haven't just jumped straight to a, a d definite conclusion as to finish this relationship immediately, because that does seem a little bit too short-sighted. So um, genuinely... OP, best of luck. And that is going to do it for this one, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button, man. Do it for me. If you want more Reddit relationship drama straight away, check out this playlist on screen somewhere here of all my relationship content. Uh, it's also linked down below if you're on a podcast platform. See you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. And make sure to stay tuned for some more relationship drama.